God. I mean, if, if anything, his problem was that uh, he didn't realize uh, that humor will not translate in sound bites, in quotes. And so oftentimes he would say something, you know, just off the cuff that was silly and funny and ridiculous, and everyone there would laugh like you wouldn't believe, and then it would end up in print the next day, and, you know, something crazy like Norman Mailer said, women should be kept in cages, you know, thing, things like that. And it was just, he, he loved women so much. I mean, probably more than anything in the world, he loved women. Um, he got put into a position where he was kind of seen as the, the anti-feminist, although he was, he was for the feminist movement. He just didn't want uh, people to, to get consumed with the idea that this was going to be much better. He said, look, women should be treated equally and fairly. There's no question about it. But there was a certain kind of totalitarian element, I think, uh, when the movement was starting off. I mean, there were so many different factions. And that's, I think, what he was taking issue with, was the idea of, look, you can't go from male dominance to female dominance and expect anything to be better. We're all, we're all shits, ultimately. We've got to do the best we can together. Um, so, uh, you know, those, the, those who were lucky enough to know my dad know that he was one of the funniest guys uh, who ever lived. I mean, he, uh, he had this great, uh, or I thought it was great, I shouldn't, shouldn't preface it by saying it was great, but he had, he had this joke he used to tell whenever he would uh, start a lecture. He always would flip the jokes around. He had one he would do for a year or so. But uh, basically he said that uh, it was about uh, karma and reincarnation. And he said, you know, so I die and I go up to uh, the gates and I see Gabriel. And he says, oh, Mr. Mailer, we're so happy to see you. We've been expecting you for a while. And, and uh, we asked this of all of our, our new recipients. What would you like to be reincarnated as? It's a, it's a question we ask everybody because we see that you're on the list for reincarnation. He says, well, you know, I'd like to be a black athlete. Honestly, that's, you know, I, I don't, I, you put, put, start me in a ghetto, do whatever, I'll work my way up. But I would really, you know, I've been this kind of little Jewish guy all my life and I've, you know, done what I've done, but that's what I really want to be. And uh, Gabriel says, oh, well, I hate to tell you this, Mr. Mailer, but um, black athletes are the most oversubscribed to reincarnation request we have. It's, it's a list that goes miles long. I can't. I, I can't tell you, uh, you know, the, the chances are good, but let me, let me see what we have you down for, and then we can work from there. And he looks and he goes, Ooh. well, we have you down for cockroach, but you're going to be the fastest cockroach on the block. And that was my dad's sense of, uh, you know, laughing at himself, laughing at existence, the universe, all of it, and not... not <sighs> Not being too serious about what we deal with, because at the end of the day, if you're here, it's a blessing. It's, you know, life is hard. <laughs> life is hard for everybody at some point, but it's those who are able to, to laugh at it and, and laugh with it and roll with it that ultimately, I think, live the fulfilling lives that we're all trying to do. You know, a big step there is to not take yourself too seriously from the start.